try one thing though. Get out your whiteboard as well and mark it. Let's see how much you remember from yesterday. So what does it tell us to do the two? Make it bigger, right? So we should end up with seven, 73 hundredths. Is that what you got? Okay, awesome. Well, seven hundred thirty. Okay, so I feel like we're good. I think feel like we're okay to move on. I got two, Ridley. Will you read our math target for today? Interpret. Interpret and create graphs with decimals. Awesome. I can interpret and create graphs with decimals. We've been doing decimals, right? Now we're going to look at some graphs. Open up your workbooks, please. All right, Hunter, here's our workbook time. Can you we are on page 67. Can we put our away? Just in case. Just in case. Page 67. Page 67. You got your workbook. Page 76. Oh, let's see. I need everybody there in five. Four. Ashton, here's our page, but three. Two. One, zero, thank you. Let's do a few of these together. So you guys are gonna be working in your book. I will be up at the front. We might do some on the board together, but we'll take a look. So it says this bar graph shows the length of some common beetles. All right, so they're examining beetles. Which is kind of interesting. We were reading about the Everglades yesterday, right? So we were talking about nature and stuff. So this is good. This is right along with what we've been talking about. 
Number one, what is the length of a bark beetle? So we need to look at our graph on the side, on the right side, on the bottom, see if you can find the bark beetle, right? Which one of these says bark beetle? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we look on our bar graph. Ooh, now remember we were talking about vertical line plots yesterday, so we, we kind of know how this works. The interesting thing is this one does not land on a line that is clearly marked, right? Chloe? Uh, well, it's in between uh, 0 0.2 and 0 0.4, so it's obviously going to be 0 0.3. If it's halfway between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4, then yes, you are exactly right. It's going to be 0 0.3 or 3 tenths, right? Perfect. Is that what you put for the first one? 3 tenths. Now, what should be our label? Bailey? What's that? Yes, but what is our length? It's kind of sideways. It's hard to see. Centimeters. So when we put our, our length three tenths, make sure you put CM on the side, right? We want to put centimeters. We've got to be accurate. Good. Let's look at number two. How much longer is a firefly than a bark beetle? So first, we already found a bark beetle. Lucas, how high or how long is the firefly? It is one and three tenths. One and three tenths. You're exactly right. And what did we say the bark beetle was? Uh, one zero. Three tenths, right? Right? And we are finding how much longer the firefly is, so we've got to subtract, right? So we can find how much longer. One and three tenths minus three tenths is? One. Just one. Yeah. Just one. So we can put, for our answer, one centimeter. You with me? Okay, let's take a look at number three. Estimate the length of a tumble bug in hundredths of a centimeter. Hmm. Okay, a tumble bug, hundredths of a centimeter. So if you notice, it's the purple one on the side, right? It does not go all the way to a line. Andrew, what would you do? Since each one of those is one tenth, and you split that into tens, you need it halfway in between the the 9, the 0 0.9, the mm -hmm. 1, and halfway between that would be 95, since it's right in the middle of it, so right. 5 tenths. Yeah, and exactly. And it's over there, you know it's 9 tenths, so it's 0 0.95. Right, exactly. I would say that the halfway point between these two is would be exactly 95 hundredths. So we could estimate that really well. So yeah, 95 hundredths of a centimeter. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. The actual length of one beetle shown is 150 thousandths of a centimeter. Which beetle is that? So look to the side and see if you can find one that lines right up with either 15 hundredths or 150 thousandths. Those are the same thing, right? See if you can find the one that lines right up. And then write that the name of that beetle. I'm gonna come and take a look. Ooh, Connor got it. Which one lines up right along the 15 tenths? Which would be right between these two, right? This would be 20 tenths and 15 tenths would be right along. There you go, Braxton. Did you find it? No way. A tenth. A one tenth would be right there. This is two tenths. It would be right in between. Is there one that lines up right in between those two lines?
up but right now it's too late so if you take a look at the seed beetle it's the one with the orange bar right it is halfway between the 20 hundredths line and the 10 hundredths line 15 hundredths would be right between those two lines and that's where the seed beetle that's how long he is you see that now with the orange bar so here's 20 hundredths. Two tenths is the same as 20 hundredths. Ten tenths would be this line right here. So 15 hundredths would go right in between. And boom, there's our seed beetle. <laughs> okay. You're like not knowledge bomb, bro. I know, right? <sighs> okay, number five. A June bug is about two and five tenths centimeters in length. We do have June bugs in Utah. Uh, let's see, about how many times as tall as the tumble bug bar would the June bug bar be? Okay, so think two and five tenths, two and five tenths, and we're comparing that to the tumble bug. How long is the tumble bug? Raise your hand and let me know. How long is the tumble bug, Kaden? Nine tenths. You might be right. I just my book is so tiny that I can't see. So I'm just gonna come look. Tumblebug. You're right. You're right. It's it is nine tenths, and the June bug is two and a half. So we are actually just finding. Um, we're kind of rounding like we did yesterday. Does anybody have a good estimation, a good guess? How about how tall? What do you think, Lizzie? Three times as tall. Three times as tall. That's what it says in the book. So I, and I agree. So if we have the tumble bug, which we said was about nine tenths, the June bug is two and five tenths, it's about three times as tall. That's what we would put for number five. Okay. Turn your page one. We are almost done. We actually are not on this one. No, I'm sorry. Now we're on page 68. Everybody turn their page one. We're not on the solar system page. We're on the other one. What? <laughs> sorry. I know. I know. Wait, is that's great? Are we skipping this one? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now I can draw like a huge scary space monster. Okay. Just not during our lesson right now, right? Okay. 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 So this talks about making a bar graph. We have got in the left hand box on the side, we've got samples A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, right? Everybody can see our samples. Right. Are we doing this tomorrow? We're actually not. We are going to use the box on the right to make a list that shows each mass rounded to the nearest hundredth of a milligram. So take a look at your box on the left. It says sample A is 
136 thousandths of a milligram. Now, in the box on the right-hand side, we're going to put it rounded to the nearest hundredth. Okay, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Here's our hundredth. I have, this is the one that's either going to stay the same or it's going to go higher. Braxton, what am I going to do? Uh, it's going to make it go higher because it's going to be higher than four. It's going to go higher. You're exactly right. So when we put it, we're going to, if we round it to the nearest hundredth, we're going to go 0 0.14. 14 hundredths milligrams. And this is what goes in the box to the right. Right? So we're writing this. In the box to the, oh, sorry, yep, it's the box to the right. For a second I got confused because I was looking at it upside down. Are we doing all of them rounding? Yeah, see if you can fit sense. all of those in. You guys should be pros at rounding because we did it yesterday, right? Okay, sample B. So sample B is 168 thousandths of a milligram. We're rounding to the nearest hundredth. Here's my hundredth. So the six is the one that's going to stay the same. Or round up. I look next door. Uh, eight is greater than five, so this one is going to round up. 17. So sample B should be yes, seventeen milligrams. You've got it. So we could fill in all of the um, masses on the right hand side, and then from there we could make a bar graph, right? Definitely, we could label the side, label the bottom, and make a bar graph. Unfortunately, though, I don't want to do that during class right now with just our practice book. Let's see what we can do on our homework so that we can just practice during class right now. All right, so here's my paper pass to Braxton, right? Let's pass out the homework and see if we need to do a few together on here. In fact, let's do that. Once you get yours from Braxton, we're going to do number five. We'll at least start it together so we can get you going. But I think you can start on one, two, three, and four because I think you guys can do that really well. But once I see that everybody has their paper, we'll start and look at number five together. I don't want homework. Remember, once you have your paper, you can start. When I see that everyone has their paper, then we'll do number five. Let's take a look. I almost did the pool. So, which one up here says pool? Okay, so then we will go. Okay, so it's halfway between, let's see, what's halfway between 2.0 and 2.2? You're close. Look, here I've got a zero, here I've got a two. When I'm counting, what comes in between zero, what, and then two? Exactly, so 2.1. So that's what we put on that line. 2 and 1. That's your answer. Oh, you got it. I'm sorry. And we are in kilograms. So let's put a kg right out. Ooh, remember your labels. Remember your labels. On this one, we're in kilograms, right? We're in kilograms. So make sure you do a kg. That's our abbreviation. Riley, head to your seat, friend. KG is our abbreviation for kilogram. That's plenty of things. And then we'll look at some more in just a minute. Okay, so now let's pause where you are. Everybody freeze. Let's take a look at number five. We're going to make a bar graph showing this information. And the information that we're using is in this box on the right hand side. Okay? It's talking about cities and the amounts of rainfall. Okay? It also says to remember to give your graph a title, label, labels, 
and the scale. Now they've given us the cities at the bottom. What do you think we could title this graph? Mr. Five. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Rain job. Let's see. We've got cities Nine and two. rainfall amounts. What could we title this graph? What do you think, Tyson? Um, then, this, er, rainfall. Rainfall on the city. And... Yeah. Rainfall in the cities. Something like that. It can be very general. It doesn't matter. But we also, we always want to put a title on our graph so that anybody takes a look knows what it, what we're showing them, right? They want to know what the data is. So we can just write rainfall in these cities or rainfall in, I don't know where these cities are. I wish I knew what state, but they were all the same. I don't know if they're all from the same state, though, I guess is what I was trying to say. Okay. First, though, let's go ahead and we will graph the amounts and then we, oh, we actually have to label the side. I'm going to turn on my document camera so that I can do this better. Oh, uh, let's see. Braxton, will you turn off, no, you're not my light person. Who's my lighting director? This week? Connor, will you turn off one light? Second here. Let's see, man. I see Manic and Tyson. You can't see me. Oh, hi, hi, Tyson. I'm a snake. Hi, Tyson. I know. Hi, whoever's small. It's never ending. It's never ending. <laughs> I see two times. I see three times. You see three? Oh, one, two. Oh, I see four. One, two, three, four. Ah. Uh, huh. Three. One, two, three, four. It's never no, ending. Rocks. My yes. document camera is not turning on. When we switched it because of the problems with the uh, airplay. What? No, no. Oh. 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 Sorry. All right, we're doing the board. It's fine. It's fine. No. All right. Oh. Connor, get that light again. Put him in a security camera. Well, and this is a question about the wrapping. Let's do this one together, and then I'll answer your question in just a sec. Okay. So. Taking a look at our rainfall amounts, look on your graph at the, or the data chart on the right. We've got 20 hundredths, 10 hundredths, 5 hundredths, and 25 hundredths. How do you think we should label the side of our graph? What do you think we should go by? What do you think, Bailey? Sure, right. Yeah. We got to make sure that we get each one, but I like that. So let's let's count by tens. Could we count by tens? Well, let's count by fives. Let's count by fives. Actually, that will get us more. I like that. So we'll do five hundredths. 
10 hundredths, 15 hundredths, 20 hundredths, 25 hundredths, and that's actually all that I need to do because there's only 25 in the 25 is my highest amount, right? Well, I just did the whole thing with the 35. Okay, now let's go ahead and fill in our bars. So it says right here that Chester is 20 hundredths centimeters. And these are centimeters, by the way. I should have written that. I don't know why I'm echoing this right now. Can't you just try to make right to on the top? Can't you just try to You could. Sam? Okay, so Chester, we find Chester at the bottom. That is actually our first option, right? And Chester on the side says it's 20 hundredths. So we come over here. This is Chester. And we take our bar graph and we go up to 20 hundredths. Right up to 20. There we go. Right? You're with me? Yes, ma'am. Fill it out on your paper. Okay, the next one says Creekside is 10 hundredths of a centimeter. So here's Creekside, and it's 10 hundredths. So I look over here to the side for 10 hundredths, and I make a bar graph that goes right up to the 10. There we go. I'm going to let you finish the last two, Merton and Warner. I think you can do it. I will be walking around. Um, use the chart on the top for one through four. You guys will be set. Good job. You can start on the remembering side. Uh, we have about four more minutes. You can do something quietly at your desk. No, no uh, Chromebooks out yet, though, so it's just something quietly at your desk if you're done. You could read, you could draw. Sure. Wait, you're done with that? With the whole. Um, I would just the names. 